kilometers per hour along Vancouver Island and up to 70 kilometers per hour in the lower mainland, bringing widespread power outages and disruptions to ferry services. Rainfall totals could exceed 100 millimeters in some areas, while alpine regions brace for up to 100 centimeters of snow as freezing levels plunge below 1,000 meters. To make matters worse, elevated tides from the recent king tide cycle could cause storm surge flooding in coastal communities like Victoria and Campbell River. This storm shares striking similarities to the infamous Pacific Northwest Cyclone of October 2021. Prepare now, stay safe, and follow us for more updates on this major weather event. Well then, we've got a big storm coming in. I know, my mom was sending me a link. She's like, are you safe? Are you careful? And yeah, it's um, Tuesday afternoon. And let's check outside. Uh, nothing happening yet. It's pretty quiet so far. Yeah, so we're gonna go have a shower. We're gonna go grab some water and then we'll probably park somewhere safe for tonight because tonight's supposed to be a big windy day. Yeah. I think we'll just relax and enjoy a little bit of peace and quiet in the van, even though that's pretty much all I've been doing. Yesterday I kind of just watched Netflix all day. It did rain a little bit, but not a lot. But yeah, it's kind of just one of those things where I'm just trying to save money at this point. Like, I don't really want to drive a long distance right at this point. I was thinking of doing a few things, but like everything costs so much money right now. And I don't have a million dollars sitting in my back pocket to go to to cool places. Like, I'd love to go over to Vancouver Island and travel up the coast and check out Port Hardy and all that cool stuff. But I just can't afford it right now. So, yeah, I kind of just binge-watched an entire few seasons of a TV show. <laughs> yeah, probably not healthy. I should probably go to the gym, grab a few things. I'm out of bananas and cream and yeah that's kind of my what I've been doing the last few days sorry I haven't really been posting a heck of a lot although the video I did post did do pretty good I mean I think it's over 500 views or yeah it's over 500 views now and um, we've hit over 600 subscribers what no way thanks guys for subscribing to the channel I appreciate it a ton all right guys, let's hit the road. Objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. First stop, let's get some water. I'm gonna go race into the store, grab some cream, some bananas, and I think that's pretty much all I wanna grab from this. Gotta go on a budget. You can't just go out and buy like a handful of donuts or something. No good. No, nope, not gonna happen. Yeah, right, I'm gonna walk in there and I'm gonna walk up with a stack of donuts. Just watch. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we'll see you guys in a few seconds. Yeah, went in, bought some groceries. I realized we don't have any cream either, I mean, I realized I don't have any eggs either, so I picked up some eggs. Picked up some potatoes for dinner, so we're gonna go park here in a little bit and start dinner, because we're gonna have a little bit late dinner. That's all right. And I know I was say I was gonna get some donuts. Well, I didn't say I was getting donuts, but uh, yeah, I couldn't resist. It's always like on your way out the door, you just look and go, oh, they're on sale. So picked up some Nanaimo bars. And the cool thing about living in the van is I don't need to put these in the cooler right now. I can just throw them in the front seat because it's nice and cool up there. Which is kind of like a bonus. It's like the front seat, front seat fridge, I guess you'd call it. When you're parked for a while, the front seat is so cold. It's, you could just store things up there. I should probably store my potatoes and my onions up there. It's a little bit colder. But I figure since we're 
parked in a safe location. I'm gonna cook a little bit of lunch here. My tummy's starting to growl. Mmm, lunch is served. Coffee's ready. We'll see you guys when we get packed up and ready to go down the road. I'm gonna enjoy my food. Mm. Yummy. This is a terrible, terrible idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to go work out now. Double time it. Mm. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this and then we're gonna hit the road before it gets dark. See you guys in a few minutes. All right, got some diesel for the heater. Filled the jerry can, so we're good for a while. I guess this is like storm prep day. Preparing for a storm. I don't think we need much else. I think we're pretty well packed and ready to, to weather out this storm if we need to. But uh, yeah, let's go have a shower and go find a place to park. See you guys down the road. I'm all showered up, but I'm looking at the weather here and we're gonna get rain here pretty quick. So it looks like the storm's just about here. I know you guys can't really see my face. I'm gonna have to fix that one day. We're gonna install some lights in the roof <laughs> one day, but I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it, whether I'm gonna wire it to the batteries in the front or the wires, wire it to the batteries in the back. I haven't figured that out yet, but uh, one day. Anyways, we're gonna go to our little favorite spot for running the generator in the rain. And then I think it's also a great spot where I, I think, I, well, let's back up a little bit. So I'm not really worried about the van in the wind, it's trees falling on top of the van. So if we can go find a place that we can go hide out in the van under a bridge, that would be amazing. So we're gonna go double whammy, run the generator and hide out under a bridge at the same time. I know it's kind of sounds kind of cheesy, kind of boring, but um, I'd like to get these batteries like charged up at least once because they haven't been charged since Island Lake, I believe. That's the last time they've been really like 100% fully charged was way up in the island they're way up on the connector up in the mountains there so yeah there's not much sun here so let's go uh charge these batteries we'll see you guys down the road Hey, welcome back. So I just found, you know, the same spot I usually find that I set up the generator because it's supposed to be raining here in a little bit. We're charging, we're ready to go, but we're gonna pull up dinner and start cooking because I'm getting a little hungry, just a little hungry. So I'm gonna go grab the Dutch oven and warm it up. So if there's one thing I'm not good at, I admit, pretty decent cook, but when it comes to potatoes, I am the worst. I am terribly sorry. I, I can't cook potatoes worth crap. I usually end up finding somebody else to make sure that they are cooked because I end up getting uh, lumps in it or overcooking it. So finding that like sweet spot. So, but regardless, I'm gonna throw a couple potatoes in there. I went and picked up a three pound bag of yellow potatoes. Now I'm not really fond of russets. They do kind of bother my tummy if I eat too much but I can eat yellow and red. But um, I wasn't gonna buy a 10 pound bag of potatoes. There's nowhere I can store that much potatoes and there's no way I can eat that much potatoes and there's no way they would last long enough. But I found this for $3. This wasn't too bad, $3. A pound for a dollar was a pretty good deal considering, you know, it's only what, like 80 cents or something like that for 10 pounds or 80 cents a pound for 10 pounds. And if I was gonna buy just like two separate potatoes, it would cost me like $3 for one pound of potatoes. So this was a kind of like a compromise. Uh, hopefully I go through these potatoes before they go bad, because I don't like wasting food. We're gonna throw a couple of potatoes in our chicken soup, because I'm not a big fan of uh, noodles. Well, it's not that I'm a big fan of it, it's just I'm not 
my tummy has problems with digesting noodles unless they're like made from homemade or like wheat flour that wasn't fed pesticides and herbicides like I've noticed there's a difference between flours so anyways regardless I usually uh, will try and go alternate routes of why I want carrots celery and this time I'm gonna add a couple of potatoes this time they're a little bit fresh though they do last a little bit longer than celery like if I had celery sitting in a bag on the floor like it probably would last maybe a week and it would be garbage we got our chicken boiling turn it down I did add a uh, bouillon, a chicken a chicken bouillon cube. So I added like a cup and a half or so of chicken stock that I had left over from the last time. And then I added a cube of bouillon and a cup and a half of water. So there's a little bit more water this time. Maybe a little bit more flavor, a little bit of garlic powder, a little dash of pepper. And we're gonna just let this simmer for a little while. We'll throw our potatoes in there first, and then in a little bit, we'll throw our carrots and our celery because they don't take as long. These might take a little bit longer. All right, let's peel them up, and throw them in there. I know I kind of did a video the other day of cooking chicken soup in the van, but uh, this is just the end of the video. I figured, figured we'll do one more try at our chicken soup. I mean, it has been a few days since I cooked it, so I was craving it again. Like I said, I walked in to save on foods today, and I was just like, oh, that smells so good. This time we're gonna let it cook a little bit longer, and let it simmer a few minutes longer. Because last time I was like in a rush, because I was making a video. I was just like, oh yeah, I just wanna get this chicken soup done. I'm starving. That's why I had that snack earlier. I had that hash browns because I knew it was going to be a little while till dinner and my tummy was growling. So a couple eggs, a little bit of hash browns. That should be okay for another little while. Brought out the big knife. Just gets a little bit more difficult to cut the potatoes with a little knife. Now some people complain about cooking with onions in the van. They're like, you cook with onions in the van? Yeah, I cook with onions in the van. I don't find it to be stinky, and it's not like I'm picking up a girlfriend or or having troubles with smells in the van <laughs> or having any company over to complain about the smells in my van. So, yeah, I don't, I don't mind onions. I prefer the onion smell over any a lot of other things. I'm gonna just throw those onions on top and let it cook. Clean up my cutting board, clean up my knife, put it away. And we're gonna cover this for a little while. So we'll let this simmer for 30 minutes and then we'll throw the carrots in there and let it, and then we'll slow it down. Let it slowly cook and it's gonna be so good. So weird that it's such a basic meal. Like there's not much ingredients and it's so good. Like you could even add like broccoli, cauliflower instead of carrots. You know, you can replace a few ingredients just to suit like the way you cook it, the way you enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Let's get cleaned up. It's one thing about man life and you don't have a sink and a way to clean your dishes. You go through a lot of paper towel. That's the unfortunate thing. Unless you had a way to set up by a creek where you can grab water from the creek and boil it, boil it on the stove, you know. If you don't have that option, use a lot, a lot of paper towel. Oh yeah. Oh man, you guys, where's my phone? There's my phone, there's my phone. <laughs> the Imperium is fragile. The Great House is fighting for control. We must act. There's a war hidden in plain sight. Any war requires sacrifice. We've never seen a force like this. This could destroy the Imperium. Reckoning is here. 
Yeah. So I'm super stoked about this. I really hope it doesn't disappoint. It just came out a couple days ago and I downloaded it, the first episode. I'm super stoked. I was just in the middle of rereading that book, The Sisterhood of, or Dune, The Sisterhood. And if you didn't know, so yeah, if you didn't know, I'm a big Dune fan right now. I've got literally all their books on Audible right now, and I've read most of them. And right now, right there, The Sisterhood of Dune, that's the book that they're basing off of Dune Prophecy. I've got it on this phone that I'm recording on, and I've, I'm like halfway through the book already, but now the TV show's out, so I really, really hope they follow the guide in the, in the book, because there's going to be Erasmus, which is one of the thinking machines. There's going to be Gilbertus. There's going to be Vorian Atreides. And oh, I'm so stoked. I'm going to be watching that tonight. Probably while that's busy cooking. I'm going to enjoy my show and I'll show you guys my dinner when it's ready. When humans rose up against the thinking machines. Well, the windstorm has finally hit. It's starting to get a little bit windy. We're getting a little bit of rain. That's really hot. <laughs> let it cool down okay so dune prophecy it is not quite what i expect i knew there was going to be like parts of it that are going to be different than the book but it's quite different they're really just focusing on the sisterhood there's no other parts of the book in the tv show so far and i really really hope that they add a lot of those scenes from the book into the tv show because you get to see, like, Gilbertus from the, um, Gilbertus from the Mentat school. You get to see, um, Vorian Atreides from the Atre House of Atreides. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of that so far. I'm kind of, like, a little bit disappointed that they didn't include any of that. But at the beginning, this is just the first episode and there's been a few characters that I don't recognize their names from the book. So we're gonna see how this plays out. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that they do a good job. So far it's pretty good. It has a storyline, but I'm having troubles following along. If they followed the script from the book, it would be a little bit different. So yeah, that's my take on Dune Prophecy so far, so yeah. But anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys had a great day. I'm having a great day myself. I mean, yeah, not too exciting. I'm not doing any mountain biking. I'm not doing any fishing. I'm not doing any hiking right now. We're kind of just hanging out, saving a little few dollars, not spending a lot of money on gas. Although I did spend probably about $40, $50 just on diesel, filling up my jer jerry can and my heater because it's getting a little bit cold now. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode.